This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites to online stores, to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence to run your business. Check the link in the description and use the code BUILDMONTAGE to receive 10% off your first purchase. Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, we are going to take a look at the BenQ V7050i 4K Laser TV Projector. I'd like to thank BenQ for sending this to me, and as always, I will give my unbiased and honest feedback. I will say in the outset that I was very impressed with it, as I've had it for around a week now, and I had the chance to test it out every night under different conditions in my dedicated ultra short throw setup. So now would be a great time to hit that like and subscribe buttons for me, it really helps out when you do, but let's not waste any more time, let's get into the video. So the unit I have in front of me here is the BenQ V7050i 4K laser TV, specially designed for home theatre. It comes in a dark grey which is the first sign that it was made for a home theatre and has a wide range of specifications suitable for that use case. At a glance and reported by BenQ, we have a 4K laser light source which produces 2500 lumens and covers up to 98% of the DCI-P3 colour gamut which is a step up from Rec. 709. We also see HDR10 and HLG support and I can confirm that this is a true 4K display which means it uses pixel shifting technology instead of a native 4K chip. I will say that I was fooled when I first saw the picture as I decided not to read up on the projector before I installed it and tested it so that I didn't have any preconceived ideas about it and I really did think it was a native 4k image. I'll throw the specs up on the screen now so that you can pause the video here if you'd like to take a quick look. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. We have the quick start guide, we have the projector remote which is backlit and the Android TV remote for the accompanying BenQ TV streaming device and also a power cable. Everything is nicely packaged as you'd expect with a nice non-abrasive thin foam inside the solid foam corners. Let's take a look at the unit. It measures in at 19.7 inches wide, 15.3 inches deep and 6.2 inches high and weighs 22 pounds. So it is consistent with other ultra short throws that I've reviewed and can project 70 to 123 inches. Any more than that will defocus the image at the top and the bottom. It's finished in a dark grey with a matte finish which would suit a home theatre environment and minimise light reflections. On the front we have a cloth insert which hides the speakers which are two 5 watt speakers and not really suitable for home theatre level audio and a BenQ badge on the front. On the right side we have two USB ports, one is designated for the BenQ dongle. On the back there are two USB ports with HDMI arc support a serial port and an optical input and a recessed power plug. You will also notice two push buttons at the back which when pressed extend a ruler which has measurements on it to tell you how far away from the wall you need to put the projector to achieve a certain sized image. It's an okay feature I guess but it really didn't make much of a difference if I'm honest as my screen is already on the wall and I had to adjust it to get the throw height placed correctly and with the amount of manual adjustment required on an ultra short throw projector the rulers are just not necessary in my opinion. Nice to have but I didn't really use them. For the demo I'm doing here I won't be using the included BenQ TV dongle as I have my Apple TV 4K set up and all I needed to do is just plug the HDMI and the power cable into the projector and I'm ready to go. I did test fit the BenQ dongle just to see how how it worked but I was more interested to see how it performed with my current setup which is a 5.2 channel speaker configuration while watching some movies and TV shows. Because let's face it this is marketed as a home theatre projector and using the two speakers built in just wasn't going to cut it. So after peeling back the two rubber protectors when you power on the screen there is a panel at the top which opens to reveal the lens and also the two motion sensors which snap the picture off if they detect any movement in front. I was able to get through the whole calibration process without triggering the sensor, which means I must be getting good at calibration of these ultra short throw projectors. Here's a word about the video sponsor Squarespace. In today's world of online selling, Squarespace offer an easy to use online platform to help selling without delay, providing a wide variety of designs to suit the look and feel of your business. Build your website using the tools that Squarespace has to offer with features such as real-time shipping, multiple payment methods, and provide a rich and fulfilling experience to your customers through videos, images, and related products to help them on their buying journey. 
No matter what you have to sell, get started with a 10% discount offered to all my viewers. So head to squarespace.com forward slash build montage. I have the link in the description. So before I get into the setup and demos, my dedicated ultra short throw setup is in my upstairs lounge room and has a 5.2 Crick speaker configuration with a temporary custom made ultra short throw cabinet, which allows me to have the center channel underneath the projector. This is a common issue when having an ultra short throw projector and having the speaker above it will block the light. I made a video recently on some of the challenges with having an ultra short throw projector. So I'll leave a card up above if you'd like to check that one out. The setup I have here is a Yamaha RX V4A, which doesn't support Dolby Atmos, as I knew already under the threat of divorce that I was not going to be able to have any overhead speakers in this setup. So I opted for this receiver. I did a review recently on the RX A2A Avantage, and I was very impressed with it, which is what led me to make the decision to buy the Yamaha for this setup. And these Crix Lyrics Gold Towers and Graphics Center, as well as the two acoustic surrounds and Seismix 3 subwoofers give an incredible cinematic performance in what is really just a casual space. I also have the Vava 100 inch ALR screen, which is specifically designed for ultra short throw projectors. I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video if you'd like to check out some more about my setup. So the calibration process was pretty easy and straightforward, although I didn't like that you had to turn the legs themselves to raise and lower the four corners as it just pushed out of alignment each time you do that. I would have preferred dials on the sides like some of the other ultra short throws I've tested. It did take a bit of time to get everything in place and the built-in functions on the BenQ menu really did make the process pretty easy. Unlike my Vava projector, there are no individual points for keystoning. It was really only vertical or horizontal shifting. And as I've often said, keystoning should be avoided at all costs. It is better to get the projector aligned the hard way to avoid any light bleeding and resolution loss. So my first impressions of the picture quality are that it is a native 4K image. I found the clarity and detail very precise to my eyes. And although I don't have any calibration equipment, I was able to tweak the image to a place that I felt looked really good. If I was to be at all picky, I felt that I had to increase the saturation levels more than I normally would to get it where I found a pleasing level, but that is just to my personal taste. I don't have any means to test 3D, but this projector is capable of 3D at 120 hertz. I have been watching various types of content over the last week and found it quite pleasant to watch, fairly quiet when it's in eco mode, and I will say that smart eco mode was my preferred mode as the black levels overall looked really good without any sacrifice to the brightness and the vividness of the image. There is also a cinema master mode, which I'm sure would be perfect if you're gonna use calibration equipment to squeeze the most out of the unit where you could make some very granular adjustments to the image. For both movies and TV series I was watching during the last week, I found the experience quite enjoyable with the quality being comparable to a high-end TV, but just bigger, which is what I'm used to in the current setup that I have and also with my dedicated home theater. I'm all for having a larger screen in a casual space, which is way more affordable than a similar sized TV. For gaming, this projector has a reported input lag of 83 milliseconds, which is on the high side, so not really suitable for first person shooter games, but if you wanted to play a car sim or an adventure game, this projector would likely be okay for that. I will say visually that the image is stunning and it's a shame that we don't have a gaming mode to reduce input lag. I think that the BenQ V7050i is a worthy option if you're looking for an ultra short throw projector for your setup. It retails for $34.99, which sits squarely in the middle of the range price-wise when you're talking about an ultra short throw projector. And with the great feature set and affordability, could be the one for you. I could easily see this as being part of my own setup. However, I already have an ultra short throw projector and a very cool upgrade in that space coming very soon. If you'd like to let me know what you think of the projector, let me know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss my future videos. You can also support the channel by hitting the join button down below and I also have links in the description to some of my other videos and check out the playlist at the end of the video if you'd like to find out more about my ultra short throw setup. Anyway guys, a very big thank you for watching, but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.